Good evening, Mets fans. If I sound tired, it's because I am. I have a funny story to tell you. So originally, this episode was scheduled to go to 5.30, 6.15, and I did it. But I realized I wasn't recording the entire time because I called up Benson. He didn't know he does the Bucks dugout, and he runs this whole thing. And he checked for me, and I did, you know, didn't record. So now I'm doing a shortened version of it. I mean, thank you. Thankfully, Vince let me do a half hour. So, I'm starting at, you know, 6.20, 10 at 6.50. So, that's why I'm starting at such a weird time. And, you know, I think I had a good laugh over it. Because I spoke to myself for 45 minutes, which is very long when you're speaking to yourself. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm now here. I'm back, by the way. I was on vacation for a long time. I had things to do. But... You know, I'm back. And before we start, I said this like five times in the last episode, which I didn't record. I'm going to the night game on the Saturday. Me and Metsu Universe, I believe his Instagram is. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I believe that's it. So again, we're both going. DM me on Instagram. And obviously, it's just Sal Mosca. That's my Instagram. I'm looking up. I should put up. And me on Snapchat. Just look up Sal Mosca. I don't even know how many people on Snapchat. Um, you know, me and him, we, we will be more than happy to meet you guys. I've never seen him, so I'm going to see him for the first time. You guys can see the face behind the voice. A very tired voice, which has been up from 6 o'clock. From football that recorded an entire podcast episode without recording it. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm sorry if I sound tired, it's because I am, so excuse me. Um, but again, DM you guys on each of us. A few of you that will actually DM me. <sighs> so yeah, that's how I'm going to tell you guys the end of the episode too. You know, for filler. So yeah, okay. My MVPs. For this week, I remember I had obviously Robinson Cano for hitting. Man was killing it, you know, doing his thing, hit yeah, three home runs, bada bing, bada boom. Um, you know, he's actually, you know, besides that, he's batting about 425, I believe, or something like that, since the All Star break, which is obviously phenomenal. Hopefully, he finishes the year around 275, which I would consider the win. Hit about 15 home runs, 10 home runs, which I think is normal for him anyway. Because even in his prime, he hit about 25, 30. You know, he's always been a high batting average type of hitter. So, yeah. I'm so tired, guys. I can't go over that. I recorded that episode. Alright. <sighs> Pitchers, I'm giving it to DeGrom because he just pitched phenomenal today. He pitched he was great. You know, he pitched fun down the hole. No one else is there to say. No one else really. You know, Syndergaard pitched terrible. Um, really pitched all right. You know, all the other guys are really having, you know, they're not sticking out, but Wheeler, uh, the, the Grom is. Um, I saw it. <sighs> Actually, Logos posted this on their Instagram. He makes a bunch of cool edits. I use like all my wallpapers and like profile pictures, it's amazing. I love you actually get those. Please DM me. Um He made a lo I made a logo, <laughs> funny enough, you you think. Um and it was like the Grom and it said the Sun King because he has the best DRA in daytime in all of baseball history, of all time, ever. And that's more impressive than you think, because she's beating up guys like playing like Kershaw and all the greats. And people forget how big Wayne Kershaw was. You know, the guy had three Cy Youngs and an MVP before he was 26. You know, I don't realize how good that is. The Grom made his debut when he was 26. When when the Grom was 26. I'm when Tom and Kershaw was 26. You know, so picture that. Uh, excuse me. So yeah, I give it to the Um uh, relievers. They've all sucked, honestly. 
I'll give it to Justin Wilson since he's back. He's been Justin Wilson. I can find, I can concentrate for another 25 minutes, I'd agree. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I really am sorry if I sound off or anything. Like, I'm just tired. I've been up a while, I recorded an episode, which really wasn't recorded. Yeah. Please, guys, stick, stick with me while I'm trying to do this. Um, so... MVPs. Finally, Jesus, Lord have mercy. All right, we are going to be talking about trades. Woohoo! The most unique idea to talk about during July baseball ever. So we'll talk about. Um, so let's we'll get the obvious guys out of the way. Frazier and Vargas. Ooh. Um, obviously, the two guys that are. Oh, and we'll talk about Wheeler later. Um, but the two guys, both contract friendly, um, you know, they we can we really can't get anything about them just by themselves. But if we package them together, I think we'd be like a project next player, a player that will be in the MLB in about four to five years. That's still developing, but has the potential to be really good. A guy like this, NBA, NBA fans, you know, Sons of Kumbo, he was taken, you know, deep into the first round because yes, he had the potential to be good, but player, you know, there's teams on a ready now player, but obviously he wasn't ready. He was had to develop at least another two, three, four years. So, I think for the right situation, for the right team, the right farm system, the right player, if everything goes super duper perfect for the Mets, which it never does, you miss them. <sighs> Alright, who do we got next? I'm like, roll, I already, I already, ha- I already know what I'm going to say. So, um, you know, again, you know, I originally did that. I talked about that for another, like, five minutes. But, you know, I'm all out of ideas. All right, next guy, Dom Smith. Um, can't play defense. Um, you know, obviously. So, you could get some. I think you can actually get something very good. I think he should start as many games as possible during the deadline. I think that as long as he doesn't make another big error in the outfield, you can actually get a pretty hefty haul for him, as long as he doesn't. <laughs> as long as the ball isn't hit to him, guy, we should be good. But you know, I feel like he can definitely be a, a above average. I think Donald Smith could be. A, well, I think Donald Smith could be an All Star. Bold prediction. That's right. The man who once said Donald Smith was a bust now says Donald Smith could be an All Star. That's right. I see. And it will be sad to see Dom Smith go. Because he's, you know, I I really don't care if they don't trade him because I, you know, he's still young. I still think maybe we can work out some defense in him. Or maybe we can. I don't think left field is the best position. I think third base possibly be a position. Because, you know, Frazier's going to be gone, and, you know, then he can play against righties, J.D. Davis can play against lefties. Um, you see a lot of third, you see a lot of third basemen who play first base, you obviously thought Frazier was one of them, Freddie Freeman, guys like that, but we can never see first basemen go to third base, but maybe Dominic Smith can be the first of his kind. He's a different breed than all these people. You know, you feel me, you dog, you feel me? All jokes aside, and my lazy posture and voice aside, I do think that if Dominic Smith gets traded, who knows? But if he doesn't, who cares? No. 
Um, if he turns out not to be good next year, it's what have coulda, shoulda, but, you know. What have coulda, shoulda. <laughs> All right. What do we got next? I'm rallying them all. Oh, and we also have some of the guys you don't expect. Uh, first one, Edwin Diaz. He's been in some... My house phone goes off now. Excuse me. I'm doing mm-hmm. a podcast. Do you mind? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, that, that's done. Um, <laughs> Edwin Diaz. I make myself crack up sometimes. You know that, guys? Edwin Diaz. I'm kind of happy. This version is a lot better than the other version. This version is a lot more energetic. I should talk like that. I should talk like this more often, you know what? Sound like I'm real New York. Kind of attitude. Kind of like from Queens. Uh, Edwin Diaz. Woo! Edwin Diaz. I can fuck all hours out of him. Not today. I get 10 hours a week. Um, Edwin Diaz is a unique character. We traded for him. Gave up a top 25 prospect now. Uh, as long as he doesn't become the next part of Talking about Jared here, not the Diaz. Um, it should be good. I think it could be a possible win trade for us. Um, you know, Edwin Diaz is unique. And that he blown so many saves this year. But his year is still actually pretty decent. He's not having a bad year. He's having a bad Edwin Diaz year. But he's still one of the best reviews in baseball. So, you know, he's not better than Peter. Uh, he definitely hit top five in the National League, at least. I hate to say Hater is the best in the National League. And then probably Chapman or... Who's in the American League? Lord knows. Is there even pitching in the American League? is like no team in the American League is known for their pitching besides the Yankees. But like, then the Yankees, but they're known for anything. You know what I mean? Did you feel me, dog? See, I'm, I don't know why I'm speaking like this. Um, so, yeah. Possible teams I can see Edwin going to are teams like the Yankees, who always love to bolster up their farm system and do have the prospects to make it work. <coughs> um, Clint Frazier. <coughs> now I actually have to call. Hold on. I'm going to. Can I mute my mic? No, wait. Wait, yeah, I can't. I don't even know how to. <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, you know, Edwin Diaz, obviously, I think a team like that, I think a team like Milwaukee would be a great fit for him. I think pretty much I'd say the same fits were probably the same fits for the for Syndergaard, too. Oh, okay, so, yeah, so Syndergaard and Diaz both had, the, I think the best fits for them are teams like the Reds, teams like the Yankees. I don't know why I'm saying teams like, teams. <laughs> uh, um... The Brewers, um, I think the Padres can both make a deal work because obviously they have an amazing farm system. Um, I would like to see the Braves if they're an interdivisional team, so it's not going to happen unless it'd be a three-team trade. Um, I can see maybe the Indians if they are if they become. I think they're in a position where they could definitely become buyers. And definitely beat the team that ends up going to the AL wild card, just because they have Francisco Lindor on their team and there's Jackson Chow still, you know. So I, I definitely did they lose to the Blue Jays now on the on the live YouTube game? Did, I, did you guys watch that the live YouTube game? I watched that, and I watched the Indians blow a lead to the to the Blue Jays, to the Blue Jays. I I saw Vlad Guerrero in an absolute shot. That hit the wall. I'm so sorry if I'm loud. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, I have ADHD, so I get like these energy spikes when I'm tired. I think most people do, but like, it's kind of like, you know, on 11, you know, scale to 11 for me. And then I have like this where I'm going to black out and I don't know what I'm saying, what I'm doing. <sighs> okay. Let's try this again, ladies and gentlemen. And one dark horse team I see for them both going is the Angels. So yeah, the Angels is really it. I just think they're a dark horse team. And, and All righty, we got uh, the 
Who am I missing?